I greet you as always. And today we deepen our relationship with events as they offer themselves to you in your life. Perhaps you have wondered at times why this happens here or there or now or later. Well, in some ways we can identify, we can glimpse into the very nature of events, personal events, global events and such. And so we will investigate a series of descriptions of the events that most affect the earth and most affect lifetimes upon the earth. You will note that these categories have a bit of overlap here and there, that one could be matched to another. They are distinct. However, when it comes to the third dimension in which you make your way in your life, a dimension that is known for its sluggishness at times, its density at times, there is more of a relationship, more of an overlap than there would be if we were to explore this same subject, perhaps from the celestial perspective or even on another celestial body. However, for the sake of these discourses that are shared with you, it is always with the intent that you would glean the most of it from your own personal experience. And so we will describe them from that perspective. The first, then, is a random event. Well, as it sounds, a random event is not one that can be calculated when the next random event would take place. And yet, there is a science to randomness as well. This is not the same as what you would call chaos theory. The theory of randomness is slightly different, and of course it depends whether you are applying it to the scientific principles or others. For the sake of this discussion, then, a random event is one that could take place almost anywhere at almost any time. What makes this category different is you. You, as the human perspective, is in essence what would attract a random event to you. Now, while you are interacting in your life, randomness passes by. For instance, you are walking down a sidewalk with your own agenda of where you are walking to from here to there. While you are walking along the sidewalk, a normal day's traffic activity is taking place beside you on the road where cars are passing by. If a car accident takes place just next to you that you are witness to, but had nothing to do with you, that is a random or a randomized event. Now, taking that a little bit further, let us say you continue along your walk and a few blocks later the same thing happens again. Are you witness to that event? Is it still a random event? <laughs> Raise your hands, yes or no? Well, there is an answer to that. The answer is, if you assume that the first one was a random event, then you may safely assume that the second one was also a random event. If, however, you say to yourself, oh, no, I cannot imagine that that happened just next to me. There must be a reason for it. There must be a reason why I was witness to it now and today and for now, and I wonder what that could be. Then the next event may not necessarily be a random event. And so this example that I offer to you is to describe the nature of a random event. It is random because random events are taking place where they do, here and there. There are energies and moments 
movements of light and sound and energy that direct as well as distract, making random events. They are random until you become either interested in them, attracted by them, drawn in by them, or in some way become a calculated risk of the random event, in which case it may then change from one category to another. This is one of the reasons why long ago it was said, well, mind your own business, you see? It is not so much that you are not to be a careful citizen or member of your community, a good friend or family member. In some ways, it describes this. Allow random events to be just that. Do not bring them into your energy field. Do not make them your events, you see? And so here is a simple example for you as we continue. The next one we will describe, we will call a fixed event. A fixed event is that which is located exactly where it is located. In some ways, you may use the metaphor of an accident waiting to happen, though that is not necessarily what may happen. If you look into the sky and you will see that there is a star in its fixed position, you may say the same of that kind of event. Some events are fixed events. For instance, there is a time when a child becomes an adult. It is a different event for each one. It is at a different time for each one. But it is a well known that at some time, some event, some moment will come forward, some trigger will be offered, and the child becomes now an adult. So it is fixed at some point in the life it will happen. Fixed events are personal events. They are not random events. They are personal. They belong to you. However, you may not always know the how, the where, or the when of that event. Although in this case, your soul does. So in this perspective, then, a fixed event is one that is known to be where it is or that you will at one time stumble upon it or consciously choose it. It is fixed as part of your life plan, but it is not necessarily consciously known to you. It is, however, known to the soul and the soul at its discretion, depending upon your relationship with your soul may alert you to this. A fixed event is neither good nor bad. It is simply something that is important. It has importance. It has a vibration that cannot be set aside. A fixed event cannot be put off. You would not say, oh yes, at some point I will choose to become an adult, but I will put that off for a time. It is at the soul's discretion. It is fixed again, but not known to you. Similar to that, but not exact, is a preordained event. A preordained event is something that at times, not always, but at times is associated with a past life. In this case, you may call it a life lesson. You may call it a treasure, a discovery. Again, I tell you that as we describe these events has little to do with positive or negative, for it can be that in these preordained events you come into great riches or great enlightenment as well. A preordained event, then, is one that comes from a long, long time ago, or so it would seem from your perspective. Somehow you know that it is part of your awareness. Somehow you know that strangely associated with your life here or there, something is bound to happen. And this comes from ages ago. It comes as well from your teachers, inner and outer. It comes as well from promises or vows made long ago. Once a vow is made, a high or true, or from the heart, vow, it exists. It cannot be diminished. It exists. And it will keep its promise. It will keep its appointment.
Again, you may not always know the exact nature of this, but you will know something regarding this. In this case, there is more of a bleed through from the soul to the personality. So it is not only the soul that can direct this. You, in your personality, in your higher personality, your higher awareness could draw this closer to you or further away. This time scheme, timescape can be manipulated by you. You can say, oh yes, I know that I will come into that place in my life, but not yet, not now. I offer you an example that perhaps you know that one day you will be called upon to take the reins of the family business, that you have been preordained to do this because all members of your family have at times and you simply know that you will. But you will say, not yet. Now I wish to travel the world. Now I wish to begin my own business or become an artist or a scientist or a philosopher for a time. Then I will return and take the reins. And so the event itself is ordained. You will not set to decide. Somehow you know and understand that it is yours, not simply because of responsibility, but because of an inner directive as well. But you then, whenever possible, can direct its timing accordingly. The same could be said of when you wish to be a parent or when you wish to marry. These are very simple examples that I give to you for the sake of our discussion. It is for you then to determine in your life the other events that may be a little bit more complex in their structure as organized by your soul. As I offer this subject to you, it is for you then to have a discourse with your higher awareness and with your deeper thoughts to see how they will relate to this now life. I do say to you as well that it is a timely subject that I bring to you given the course of events on the earth at this time. For, as you have well been told, life is changing and changing more still in the near, near future. And so it is well to understand the nature of events so that you do not wonder and wander about wondering what is happening and why or why it is happening to you or not happening to you and yes, for others and like that. These bits, pieces of knowledge will allow you to fit together the puzzle pieces a little bit more tightly, perhaps, so that you will be, be able to see the picture before you, not only that which is two-dimensionally before you, but that which has depth. Look into the picture book of your life. Look to see what is in the background. Look ahead to see what is in the next pages that await you. As we continue then, the next event is what we will call a destined event. Again, it will seem somewhat similar to a preordained event. But a destined event is just as it sounds. You have a date with destiny. Destiny has more to do with your life path. Destiny has more to do with your purpose. So here now we are speaking of purposeful events. Events that will coax you forward, invite you, teach you, cajole you, or what needs to be done to take you down through a certain path into a destined time in your life. Each life has at least one destined time, at least one time in which one has, whether it is a brush with mortality, a thought of what life beyond life will hold, a thought that life has more meaning than was previously thought, a greater meaning a depth that was previously unfelt. Perhaps even the illness of a good friend would cause one to think, hmm, and life is short, and what can I do with my life that would make it more purposeful, more important, that I would see the next horizon and live life well, or that I may be a good member, family, or community that I may lead or follow or serve. And so these are destined events. A destined event at times is no more than a moment. And so as we describe an event to you, an event is at times no more than a flash. No more 
than one thought. Sometimes it could be days or weeks, months or years long as an event. But I tell you that it can also be as small and seemingly insignificant as one thought. A destined event then is one that is somehow associated with your purpose. Somehow you would not pass through that moment or this life without that thought, without that idea. It is destiny that will take you there. It is an unavoidable one and it is one that you coordinate then with your soul as well. It is mostly true that most lives have more than one destined event, more than one thought or idea or time in life that is associated with destiny itself. Again, destiny is not where you are going. Destiny is not the same as destination. Do not make this error. Destiny means full cycle. It means how do I come back to being exactly where and who and how I am now, but being completely different, you see? So, for instance, one cycle of the earth around the sun is a destiny. It is a cycle of destiny. The earth comes back to its same position, but oh, how much has happened in one year, in one solar year, to change the earth and all things upon it, you see? And so it is destiny that the earth would travel this solar path. It is a destined path, and at the same time it is associated with the earth's purpose, all things that take place at that time. So you are always on the path of destiny, but destined events are ones that you would take note of. It is rare that you would be unconscious during destined events. You will awaken at these moments. In fact, there are many that would awaken once and more than once during their life, during these destined events. Where the earth is concerned, for instance, you might consider the harmonic convergence a destined event for the earth and for all of humanity, you see, whether or not all became conscious or not in that moment, the precedent was set for all to discover that path within themselves or at some point during the life. Next we have an intentioned event. An intentioned event, another way could also be called a well-intentioned event. This is much more than a goal. The human perspective of this would say, well, that is simply a goal. At one time I would want to be here or go there, do this or accomplish that. That is a goal. However, a well-intentioned event is one that knows that it does not matter whether the goal itself is met. There is no success or failure associated with a well-intentioned event as there is with a goal. An intentioned or well-intentioned event, then, is one in which intent guides everything that is within and without. So, better put, intent has more to do with an inner event, an event of your nature, human nature, if you like, divine nature, specific nature to you. It is natural, but it is intentioned within you. It is more than a goal. Another way to put is that it is an ideal. It is an ideal event. It is ideally intentioned for you. In this case, an intentioned event would bring to you joy. It would bring to you, if you like, the feeling of success, though I hesitate at the use of the word. An intentioned event then brings wellness, well-intentioned event, brings wellness from within. It brings personal satisfaction. It is the sense of achievement, but achievement of the whole, not achievement of a project necessarily, though a project could lead one into that space of being as well. Intention comes from within. It is a desire that is beyond the level of simple humanity. Intention is directed thought. So a simple thought, I want, I need, I will go, is not necessarily intention. Intention is directed 
thought. It is conscious, directed thought. It is a thought that you can see from here to there. You can follow a timeline. You can follow a thread of consciousness from here to there, from inside to out. So a well-intentioned event begins on the inner planes in which at some point you become aware that it did not fade. It is a thought that is ever-present. It is still within you. It guides you. It speaks to you. It awakens you. It softens your moments until you cannot set it aside. It is not an obsessive thought. Again, I tell you, it is not of the goal nature, but within it is with you. It becomes your companion. It becomes your thought. An intentioned event can become your philosophy of life ever with you, whether you accomplish anything associated with it or not. So an intentioned event could very well be lifelong. It could last for an entire lifetime or half a lifetime or what it will be. For once the intention has been seen all of the way through, it is as if it never was. So others may look upon you and say, hmm, there they thought so much of this idea, they pursued it half their life, and then, just like that, they set it down, they set it aside. Perhaps it was not so important after all. And that is what it would look like from the outside. Remember that an intentioned event then comes from within, and once that inner nature has been satisfied, that sense of satiation, satisfaction will be complete. It will need no thing else, and then something else may come about. So matters not what it will look like on the outer, it will continue seamlessly from within. Next we will explore the idea of a nomadic event. Just like the nomads that pick up here and continue along a desert of nothing and nowhere and then seemingly out of the nothingness set down a camp for how long? A day, a week, a month, or a season. And somehow during that time everything that is needed comes forward. Somehow, magically, even in a desert of dryness and nothingness, one is able to extract from the desert water. One is able to grow what they need. One is able to have someone come from the nothingness of the desert with a blanket with exactly what one needs at that moment in time. So a nomadic event is one that comes from nowhere and when the moment itself is over, it returns to nowhere. It is a moment out of time. It is an event that is important in the moment. Sometimes these events are sent to you by your soul. Sometimes they are sent to you by your guides, your teachers. For instance, a nomadic event may be the appearance of a teacher at a very unique time in your life and just for a time. And a teacher, as you already well known, is one that brings wisdom or change or challenge, as a matter of fact. A teacher is a teacher of life of the higher wisdom and the lower as well so a nomadic event then is a coordinated event it is one that invites you for a short burst of time or a short burst of energy to immerse yourself in something perhaps a lifestyle that is not your own choice perhaps to go somewhere and live amongst other peoples that are not your own. Perhaps to go on a journey or a sojourn of your own time and timing without explanation, without even on your own part knowing why other than you must or that you will. And during that time, somehow, those things that you need appear. Those peoples that you may need to assist you also come forward. Perhaps the funds needed to accomplish this that would not have been possible at another time or upon another day come forward. And then, just as easily as that, one day they are gone. Or one day you are complete and you return to your normal cycle. And so you pick up camp and you return to the city life or to civilization or 
the civilized place within your own mind. Sometimes one must explore the wild nature of their own being, and so nomadic events allow that, a return to the wild, the inner or the outer. Most time these events are outer events. They are ones that you would experience physically. Later you would call them an interesting chapter of your life, but they are significant in one way. Sometimes nomadic events are also associated then with those preordained events, those that long or longer ago in another life you did not have the opportunity to know or to experience and you made yourself a promise, a vow, that in this life or the next life you would have, give yourself that experience and so you do. For one reason or another, then it is inserted into your life so that you would not miss the opportunity. It is rare that nomadic moments are missed. Most take advantage of it in some way at the very insistence of their soul. Because by then, if there is a hesitancy, the nomadic event is at times coordinated or the energy becomes even more exaggerated if it is coordinated linked together with a preordained event and yet in some cases either because of fear or responsibility or a lack of being in touch with one's soul's awareness there is a rejection of these and here i tell you that it is a pity it is a pity for later in life later in life or after this life there is a regret if you wish to know where regrets come from regrets come when you do not heed that which is your soul's love. A regret is not simply an opportunity that you did not seize. A regret is not simply what you turned down and someone else instead received. A regret comes from the soul level. A regret comes when you turned down or rejected your own soul's love, your own heart, you see, and that is where regret is. And so that is why there are as many different kinds of events and energies to be of assistance to you, guidance on the inner and the outer planes, because a human lifetime is a very unique thing. It is a very short moment, though it may seem to you that life is long. It is but a breath. It is but a cosmic breath. And so, in essence, there is little time for regrets. They are a pity, a pittance. And so the soul will do everything that it can to avoid this on your behalf, you see. Now, as we continue, the next event we will call a reward or a cosmic reward event. Well, the word itself indicates that it is something good, does it not? A cosmic reward, then, is that which you have given to yourself a promise. Again, a promise or a vow, but in this case, it is something that was unclaimed at another time. A truth that was unclaimed, a love relationship that you did not allow yourself to have for one reason or another. Notice how the cosmic reward section that I offer to you follows what I have described to you in terms of a regret because at times the cosmic reward comes from a regret that you have had in another time or another life or perhaps even this life. These are what you claim for yourself. They are energies. They are packets of love that you claim for yourself. They are rewards that you give yourself. Now, in the physical sense, most often a reward is seen as something that is monetary, a bonus, if you like. Well, you may use that analogy in this case, if you like. However, a cosmic reward is much greater than that. A cosmic reward offers itself from further away. It can be longer lasting. A cosmic reward, once you claim it, is yours forever you will never lose it. It is always yours to draw upon it as you can. A cosmic reward then is a gift of spirit. It is a gift of the universe. It is a gift of all of the lives that you have lived. It is a gift from one moment to another, from one being to another. A gift of unconditional love or it can be unconditional knowledge. 
It is something that you may take. It is as if a great being says to you, take from this room of treasure, from Aladdin's room, if you like, anything that you wish. And then from there, from within that soul level, you will enter that and take all that you wish in terms of spiritual treasure. Now, in this case, spiritual treasure means that which brings you light or enlightenment. See? So that is the Aladdin treasure. What did the lamp bring? The oil was simply to bring light, and the light brought great treasure and great events to the life, you see? So a cosmic reward then brings light, enlightenment, a gift, a gift from beyond, something that you have longed for, something that you have waited for, something that you are not certain, I deserve it, I do not deserve it, but I am oh so grateful. Most lives receive at least one cosmic reward, and yet I tell you that there are some lives in which there are not. Why? Is it simply that the universe has no rewards for some and many for others? No, it is not necessarily that at all. In this case, instead, it is that you, or a person, would deny themselves even the cosmic reward. Very similar to what we have said earlier. If you deny yourself your soul's love, you will have a regret. Well, if you deny yourself your soul's connection to you and offering to you gifts that you do not receive, because in one way or another you have been taught or have come to believe that you do not deserve or are not worthy or like that, you may set aside that cosmic reward. Now, a cosmic reward can never be given to another if it belongs to you, and it is never lost for all time. A cosmic reward is yours. After all, it was based on your promise to yourself. After all, it was based upon what a soul has promised to you and coordinated for you. So if you do not accept it or receive it in one life, there it will sit, as if in your cosmic bank account, until you would draw from it or exchange it at another time. Better it always is that you accept a gift when it is offered to you, not put it off. However... It is within human nature to do just that. And when one has not taken the time to accept their cosmic reward, one or more of them, that at times is when you will note that a human will say, I have had an extraordinarily difficult life. I don't get, I never get, no opportunities are given to me, I never see, others do and I do not, and like that. When you hear one that overly says this. Of course, it is human nature to offer such words, but when these are used over and over again to the detriment of that being, then you may safely assume that that individual perhaps has set aside far too often anything that was given, any morsel of love or any gift, setting it aside for later. And there they sit, beautiful gifts, wrapped and unopened, perhaps for one life, perhaps until later, perhaps until another life altogether. Sometimes you will see some individuals much later in their lives having all manner of experiences or purchasing those things that seem to have very little and nothing to do with the life that they are living then. Well, in some ways they are attempting to recapture that which they set aside longer ago. It may seem to you that, oh, they are simply reliving their youth or like that. I tell you that there is more involved in these choices than that. Next, we must, of course, speak then of catastrophic events. Catastrophic events are those that are considered physical for the most part. An earth cataclysm would be considered a catastrophic event. That is not necessarily the case in the perspective that I offer to you here. In this particular case, a catastrophic event simply means that which alters the course of, which changes directions or changes the order 
of something. For instance, if numbers are from 1 to 10 in sequence, a catastrophic event could devastate the order of the numbers and reorder them differently. The stars can be reordered. The orbit of a celestial body can be reordered, renumbered, renamed in this case. So a catastrophic event from this perspective is something that reorders or renames, puts an end to or a beginning to, a pause or a comma or what you would term. It is something that changes and alters a moment, not necessarily forever, but what you would term for always. From your perspective, it would say forever or for always. Life has changed or I have been changed forever by this event. So a catastrophic event is not necessarily something that happens physically to you, but it happens close enough to your physical life or your physical environment that it alters the course of your life or events as you know them. Perhaps if you would know then an illness again or a death of a friend by one mode or another that alters the course of how you think or what you do. This is a very severe example and the word catastrophe is a very severe word but I ask you to see it simply as well as that which can order an ending or a beginning. For instance you may not wish to put an end to something that no longer serves you but perhaps there is already a next beginning waiting for you of something that would be oh so much more creative, more bright, more beautiful for you. Unknown to you how to put an end to one situation, life orchestrates itself in your favor so that a catastrophic event, some thing that moves into your space, your consciousness, your experience to alter the order of things so that you will then see one thing or one choice as more important than another. So a catastrophic event changes the order of how you see things. It changes the order of importance in your life. It changes your priorities. Again, take care that you do not consider this necessarily a negative word. It is an important word. It is an important event. It is a life-altering event, but it is more that it has to do with the order of things, the priority of things as well, so that you would truly look in a new direction, take a chance, a leap of faith, a beginning, or understand the significance of an ending as well as a very important event. Following that is a chaotic event. Now, an order of chaos as we said much earlier in our discourse, is not the same as a random event. A random event is not the same as a chaotic chaos event. Chaos, then, is simply another way of ordering things. It orders events by their disarray. It orders events by creating moments that you cannot help but notice or fall into. Chaotic days, as you know, somehow there you go about your course and your day, your routine day, and then somehow chaos strikes and you are thrown in this direction or that or asked to cover this or do the other. And so it is chaos that is at work. It is an energy that moves into a field and then moves out of a field, affecting at times events as well. Chaotic events are important as well because they have a way of shaking out of your life those things that are stuck. And this is perhaps what they serve better than anything else. So not a random event, but chaos energy travels in packets here and there as well, attracted by this or that. If you are in a great deal of turmoil over something, if you have rehearsed 
thoughts again and again without acting upon them, sitting upon them, turning them and having them twist and churn within your body. Well, at times the very laws of attraction that you have already become well aware of will draw to you these packets of chaotic energy. When they move into your field, they move and shake everything in your field of awareness. They disturb the peace, but that is only as it appears to be, for they move into your field, particularly when you are not in peace at all. So it will seem to you that here comes this out of nowhere to disturb you, to change you, to shake things up. And what did you do to deserve this? Well, what you did is that you didn't. In essence, you did not allow the flow to continue to move through you. And so there is the build-up of detritus. There is that which you do not need. Plaque building in your body, in your veins, in your arteries. And so chaos comes to shake loose those things that would otherwise become mortar in your life. Making bricks around you, putting you and keeping you in a box of cement that you cannot get out of. And so chaos, which seems as if it is the very last thing that you need in that moment, if at all, comes into your life purposefully then to shake away all those things. In moments of chaos, you will begin to think, this life is not working for me. I wish to be living in a more authentic nature. I long for a greater truth, or I will no longer draw this individual or that moment or the other choice to myself. I will make a better choice, a different choice, and I will begin it now. So a chaotic event similar to a catastrophic event, and yet not the same. It shakes things up in the moment itself so that you will then choose something different. It is not the same as endings or beginnings like that. And so chaos again. Can you avoid chaotic events? Yes. For the most part you can and you will see that some individuals manage to do so most of the time just as you will see that some will draw it to them almost every day. Well, here you have individuals then that simply do not release something, anything. There they hold it. They hold it, they hoard it within themselves. A thought, a feeling that they cannot let go of. A regret, an anger, a fear, a sadness. All of this that sits and sits within the body, within the being within the mind, within the heart. Well, it is chaos then that in its own way a blessing in disguise as it would be even when no one wishes it. Lastly then, I bring to you that which we could call a life-changing or a life-altering event. This is that which by choice you invite. Here you have an invitation only event. Why would you want to change or alter your life? Well, because it is time to course correct. Remember that earlier we described destined events, destiny and purpose. Well, how do you know where your destiny and purpose lie? Life-altering events are those that bring to you clues important clues, not only as to what you are here to do, movement, but who and what you are. So a life-changing, a life-altering event can come from without or from within, from a teacher or a moment or a book or a message or a dream, almost anything. A life altering event then is something that offers to you a higher choice. Something that says, well, you can take the higher road or the lower road, the lesser road. You may choose. And in this case, it does not truly matter which one. It is not a better choice. It is simply that it is your choice. It is a life 
altering choice. The choice that you will make will take you in one direction or it will take you in another direction. These life-altering moments bring conundrums to some. Most often it is very difficult. It seems almost impossible to choose, as if to choose the love of one, one great love or another, one impossibly beautiful blessing or another, as if you can only accept one gift. And these difficult, challenging moments then do alter the course somewhat forever. Of course, much of the time you do not know or will not find out till later that you will meet the other choice at another time in this life or even a next. In the moment in which you are asked to choose, it only seems that you can only choose one and now and that it must be. And it seems as if no matter what you choose, some part of you will become satisfied and another part of you will lose and suffer. Life-altering events then bring that, the feeling of great satisfaction or accomplishment on one end and a great loss to the other. And they are meant to do so because they must then cause you, ask you to truly change, to truly alter your course, not to step aside from it for a moment or to envision it from a different perspective or a different day. So a life-altering event you will draw into your life I do tell you that in this regard, it is not always that you must decide as quickly as you believe that you must. It is not always choose now or surrender both choices. You may take the time to savor a challenge. You see, a challenge is a very uncomfortable thing for the human being. And the quicker that the challenge can be put down or set aside, so much the better. And so very quickly, well, I'll decide this. I cannot stand the, the tension. Even if it is the wrong decision, I will at least make a decision for the challenge is unbearable. I tell you that the challenges are bearable. And here and there it is appropriate to sit with them for a little bit. Make the challenge your companion. Make the challenge your friend. You will see that after all you will tame it. You may think of the challenge, if you like, as a wild lion or another animal in its own nature, one that can be tamed, not civilized, but tamed, one that can become your companion for a time so that the answer, the truer answer, is revealed to you in the process without struggle. Once you have tamed a challenge, you will see that the answer is there, was there, just underneath. But in your hurry or in your fear, because it is wild, and you wish to get away from that which is wild and dangerous, you will not necessarily see the bat which is obviously in front of you. Fear will prevent you from seeing what may be just in front of you. So a life-altering event then is that which can give you a gift of an altered course, an altered direction. It can be a great solution. If you are deciding what or how to live your life or where, a life-altering decision may come. Now, remember that life is altered, and then it can be altered again. And so when many consider the life-altering events, they seem, again I tell you, as if they will be always and forever. That is not the case. Always and forever is as long as now. Now is not necessarily today and tomorrow. Now is now. And when it is time to alter course for the next now, then it can come again. It is not always a challenge, by the by. Sometimes it is a very simple invitation. Out of the blue, you would say, a beautiful and perfect invitation which you could not imagine how to thank your lucky stars and your gratitude, a prayer come true or like that. So, sweet ones, we have explored a variety of then of events that come in and through, out and beyond and full circle in your life. 
you have entered already the time of events, if you like, now. It is a time of shape-shifting events upon the earth now, where all things are not as they appear to be. As you know, life can be somewhat of an illusion, and there you are doing your best to comb your reality from all of the illusion so that you may live as authentically and true to yourself as possible. You have entered the time of events, and so take care then that you do not make random events your own. Attract to you that which is truly useful, those things, those tools, those ideas that are useful to you. It is not the time to simply accumulate, accumulate or to hoard, you see, even if it is something that is just a thought that you will think about later. Do not accumulate or hoard information because all too quickly it becomes obsolete, older information. If you like, you may think of information as last month's magazine. By the time it has arrived, the news has already been changed. And while there may be articles of interest there, you are already looking for the new. So do not accumulate information that is already obsolete simply because others do. You will find before you know it that there are stacks of information gathered around you that prevent you from seeing through or across the invisible planes to what is very simply the new thought of the day. I offer this to you then into your care for your guidance and out of compassion and love and care for those of the earth, my family. Until the next moment, sweet ones, I bid you good day.